So hi, I'm Sputniko. I'm an artist based in Tokyo, and today my talk's not so much about AI, but it's more about looking at, okay. So I have 10 minutes, right? Or 15 minutes? 15, okay. So my talk's called Designing New Mythologies, and it's not so much about AI, but looking at the relationship between technology, mythologies, and beliefs. And um, the first project I'd like to um, introduce to you is called The Red Silk of Fate. And this is a project I've been working on from 2016. And how many of you here have heard of the mythology of the red string of fate? Unme no akaito. Yeah, I, I can see a lot of Japanese hands up. So it's a very famous mythology in Japan and China. And it's a myth mythology that says that two people destined to meet each other romantically have this invisible red string of fate connecting between them. So it's, it's a very, very old mythology. And it's obviously something that's only happening in fiction or fantasy world. But as an artist, I was interested in trying to explore ways of using science to recreate that world of mythology. So what I, what I did was that I worked with Professor Hideki Sezutsu, who is um, a researcher at National Institute of Agrobiological Sciences. Oh, does the video play? Oh, the video doesn't play. No. <laughs> oh, it, it's playing. Great. Can you see the video? So um, he's an expert on um, genetically engineering silkworms. So by adding the DNA of jellyfish and coral, you can make the silkworms' eyes glow red and green, and also the string, the silk that the silkworms produce, glow red and green as well. And basically, Professor Sezutsu, he, he is sort of seeing these silkworms as almost like uh, insect factory. So by adding a DNA that produces silk that has more um, spider web um, substances in it. You can make silk that's half spider web, half silk. So it has a very, very high strength. So I started talking with Professor Sejutsu. Okay, this, this is really crazy science, crazy technology. Oh, where did it? Where did it go? <laughs> Is the video not playing? No? OK, that's bad. So I was, um, yeah. So I started talking with Professor Sadutsu. So wow, like, th this is really crazy technology that you have. And uh, is there anything that, um, any like projects that we could start to think about? And one idea that we started to talk about was that have you heard of oxytocin? Oxytocin like, is like a social bonding hormone. So it's a hormone that's produced when couples are in love or if you're like, hugging someone. So I asked Professor Sezutsu, can you add a DNA that pr produces oxytocin, which is a social bonding hormone, and also add a DNA from a red coral so that you can make this silk glow red? So. Basically, in the end, can you make a silkworm that produces silk that glows red, but contains this social bonding, loving hormone, be, quote unquote, the red silk of fate? So I asked Professor Sezutsu, and he looked pretty puzzled, a bit surprised. But after a bit of thinking, he told me, ah, actually, it's really possible to genetically engineer silkworms that produce silk with oxytocin and glows red. So the photograph you see on the left, this is the first red silk of fate that Professor Sezutsu created and sent, me, sent to me by Gmail temp, uh, attachment. <laughs> so it's a bit blurred. And at this point, I was really amazed because I think I always had in my idea that new new insects or new creatures, new living organisms, it's something that, it's something that maybe humans 
don't design or don't create, well, maybe it's changing now, but for an artist to imagine this kind of mythical creature and talk with the scientists and actually work together. And he, uh, it was only eight months after we had our first discussion that he managed to make this red soccer fate. So I was really, in a way, it's difficult for me to say, like, maybe I was puzzled, maybe I was excited. It's that strange feeling of, did I do something really bad or did I do something really exciting? How is the world changing when an artist can make something like this? So, actually, I also did an exhibition with the Glowing Silk in v &A Museum. So we um, designed this like perfect killer dress with the oxytocin hormone. And anyhow, so the next slide is that the whole Alsa Electronica is about error, right? And I think mythologies and beliefs were often associated with errors. And science has long challenged and demystified the world of mythologies. For example, Galileo Galilei was put on trial for saying that the Earth rotates around the sun, and Darwinism is still not taught in so many schools in America. But I was really interested to see whether these new emerging biotechnology and also artificial intelligence, are they recreating a new world of mythology and beliefs, a new sense of how we um, believe in um, different things. And this is also a very famous cover of um, Time magazine, God versus Science. So as you can see, I think we all have this trouble between technology, science, religion, beliefs, ethics. And I really wanted to explore the troubles we have or the possibilities um, we have. And one thing um, I was thinking about is that I'm half British and half Japanese. So I was born and I grew up in Japan. And in Japan, we have, well, Japanese people have this belief in infinite gods, like animism and Shinto. And basically, um, Japanese people believe that there are spirits and gods in everything, trees, ocean, rocks, wind, uh, cockroaches, or a virus, or amoeba, like they all have different Shinto spirits in them. So I was interested in talking with Shinto priests about what they thought about these new emerging biotechnologies. So I went to visit Kanda Myojin Shrine, which is a very, very old shrine in Tokyo, 1300 years old. And I talked to the priest and I said, okay, um, I just worked with Professor Sezitsu. We genetically engineered this silkworm that produces this red string of fate, which is a very famous mythology in Japan. And is, well, what do you think about this whole project that I'm working on? What do you think about this whole science? And the reason why I asked Kanda Myojin Shrine is because they are actually famous for selling these IT protection spirits that protect your computers from viruses and crashes. <laughs> so if you pay a thousand yen, you can buy these little spirits that protect your computers from getting um, the viruses. So much cheaper than not an, ant <laughs> not an antivirus. So I was talking with them. So hi. You know, you're such an old shrine with so much history, 1,300 years old. And why are you selling these spirits that protect your computers from viruses? And I got a very interesting answer from them. So in Japan, um, most people buy these protection spirits or amulets that protect you from car crashes, right? Omamori, jidousha omamori. But cars only appeared in Jap Japanese society in the last you know, 50 years, 60 years. But now, like, it's a very, very normal thing for people to have these protection spirits to protect you from car crashes. And as 
a Shinto shrine that lasted such a long time, the reason why we lasted so long is because we always worked together with the current society and technology. So we always sort of updated the way people believe Shinto, the way people um, participate in the rituals. So when I talked about this genetically engineered silkworm that produces this red silkrophate, I was at first a little bit scared, like would they be really annoyed with me, angry with me? But um, they said that, well, if that's a new living thing, that probably has a new Shinto spirit in there. And actually, that new silkworm is so interesting. Would you like to work with us to make a new love amulet, <laughs> like a love supporting spirit amulet with us? So instead of being negative, they were actually open about taking that new idea in. So after that, um, I started to work on uh, this new mythology of, um, based on this story of Tamaki, who is this female scientist in the middle. So she is a genetic engineer, but she has a big, big crush on her colleague, Sachihiko. But Sachihiko, it seems like maybe Sachihiko doesn't really realize that she has a big crush. So she decides that, okay, if, the, if there's no red string of fate between them, she's going to genetically engineer her own unique red string of fate to get the heart of her crush. So while she does that, these strange Shinto power start to come into her and uh, very strange things start to happen to Tamaki. So I'll, I'll show you the video. And also, I'm a musician. I sing. So the video is a music video. So I wrote the song. I'm singing and I'm also playing Sachihiko in it. So I'll play this. It has sound. Can you play sound? Can you play the sound? No sound? <laughs> it needs the sound. There's no sound. Yeah. You know, if you don't get... Okay. Okay, it's super J-pop, but I, I, I like J-pop too much. Yeah. 
That's the real Professor Sezutsu that I worked with. Okay, so I want to show you the whole video, but <laughs> if you want to see what happens to Tamaki, please go to YouTube and search for Spotnik Girl <laughs> Red Soccer Fate, <laughs> please. <laughs> well, maybe, yeah, it's, you can see the whole video on YouTube. And, oh, shall I show it? <laughs> Anyhow, so I created a video. But not only that, I worked um, together with uh, Naruse Inokama Architect to build probably the first shrine that worships a genetically engineered animal. So this is a shrine that's in Teshima. And Teshima, that's an island next to Naoshima. Naoshima is like an art island in Japan. So um, we created these charms and um, these... Um, boards where you can write your wishes and um, it's a romantic shrine so this is the boards that you can write your romantic wishes so these are what it looks like and inside the shrine we made it into like a DIY bio lab so it's not just a shrine but if you go inside you can see how Tamaki was imagining this new red string of fate and how she was working on um, this new world of mythology. So, how, how many more minutes do I have left? Did I, did I go over? Did I? Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> All right, so, thank you, and uh, <laughs> thank you so much, thank you.